30 seconds. Coming to tell us any first. VTR 1118, Gazette, take one, part one. A general breakdown of the situation currently holding in the area, Mr. Dayton. Uh huh. And this is a particularization of the immediate proposals of interest in our today's scheme, both oral and written responses to our advertised data. Uh huh. Good. Yes, uh, we have up to date nine prospective clients organized at 20 minute intervals between the hours of 1400 and 1700. of uh, names, addresses, medical, social, and economic information as was possible to obtain. Right, Field, good. You did employ the standard pre-interview procedure. Well, yes, Mr. Johnson. I, I do have a copy of our advertising material. No, no, that's fine. It was planned on Madison Avenue. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Although there is a piece here, Mr. Dayton, in the Gazette. Westville Gazette, local press. Which I, I thought might be of interest. Uh, 
Yes, sir. Why stay in Westdale? This here? Yes. I think it does illustrate what appears to be a local problem concerning the number of lower age group people who are in the process of transferring from the immediate... I am leaving Westdale because it is dull and boring and there are no real prospects. Shop girls, typists, factory hands. Well, I'm afraid this is not the class of people with whom we're going to be dealing, Mr. Field. Uh, no, sir, no, sir. Uh, but perhaps it does uh, discuss a point that might be considered relevant by one or two of our applicants? Well, yes. Perhaps. Come on at six o'clock this morning. Yes, there were two fellows got off from the 852 from Leeds. First class they were. Were they met? Met? I come to think of it, they were. But not by anybody I'd ever seen before. Oh, crikey, I was supposed to interview them. From the Gazette, you say? Yes. I oh, thought perhaps you might be. You caused me and my wife a lot of trouble last night, you did. Well, how? Well, that article that was in the paper yesterday morning. My son Richard has never stopped waving it in my face since he first clapped eyes on it. Oh, really? Why stay in Westdale, indeed? That's a funny old story to write, I must say. Is he leaving home, then, your Richard? It'll be no fault of your paper if he doesn't, I can tell you. Keeps on and on and on about it. Grabbing young people from the town, that's what you're doing, you know. Didn't you see that advertisement, Mr. Hadley? It was in your newspaper. This week? Last week. Ah. I've got it here. America welcomes skilled men? The brain drain. Yes. Yes, and it's very likely going to cause me a lot of trouble. Oh, I shouldn't have thought so. It will, after the way you followed it up. Did we follow it up? Yes. Now, I never can find anything in this paper of mine. I really must have a word... Is this it? Why stay in Westdale by Susan Jackson? Oh, sorry, Mr. Forbes. I didn't Good realize. Harry, what is it? Oh, I just. Uh... You uh, know Mr. Hadley, do you? Uh, no, no. How do, Mr. Hadley? Harry Palmer. One of our technocrats, Harry. Doing his best to sort out some of our automation problems for us. Yes? Oh, well, you know. You're uh, not in any difficulties, I hope and trust. Oh, no difficulties, Mr. Forbes. Well, no. thank heaven for that, eh? No, I just, uh... Well, I've been meaning to ask you all this week, really, but I got a bit tied down with that new high tensile cutter over at number two, and I didn't, uh... Well, I wondered if it'd be all right for me to take the afternoon off. This afternoon? Yes, only I've got Think, some... uh, they can manage down there without you, then? Oh, they'll be all right. It's just a matter of bolting this one to concrete. We can't get started on the next till this new replacement pump arrives. No, no, of course not. <laughs> yes, that's all right, Harry, you know that. Got to pamper these men nowadays, you see. No more of that grind in the faces of the poor, eh? No. What uh, was it then, Harry? A visit to the dentist or something? No, no, Ta, no. You're uh, surely not moving house again, are you? No, no. I just um, got to be at the Royal at three o'clock. Oh, I see. Well, I've, I've got this appointment. Yes, see. yes. America welcomes skilled men. Ah, uh, yes. Joining that blasted brain drain, then, are you? Well, no, I'm just going down to see what it's all about, that's all. Just see what it's all about. Mm. 
And I've not made any plans to go around. I've not even told Janet yet. Why? Ah, uh, well. Any Rod, I'll just go see that everything's all set with Mr. Forbes and I'll uh, see you tomorrow. Yes, all right, Harry. Bye, Mr. Adley. Well then, you see, that's another one. Yes. And you know the sort of problems I'd have with him gone as well? He's important, is he? We're two-thirds into our modernisation scheme. I've got but six men who know where the hell they are with hydraulics. Mm. My son Kevin, Frank Peters, Dave Cartwright, Jack Somerdale, Harry Palmer and me at a pinch. I see. And I already know for a fact that both Cartwright and Somerdale want to go to America. Now Palmer as well. Mm. Half. I tell you, Mr Hadley, if all three of them decide to go, it's going to play havoc with my schedule. Yes. Skilled engineers are very hard to come by in this area, hmm? especially men with a working knowledge of hydraulics. We have to subsidise our team, the situation's so bad. Mm, see. Very hard to come by indeed. Yes, they must be. They are. Well, this article won't do a great deal to encourage them to stay either, will it? No. You're damned right. It won't. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Miss Jackson, but they left strict instructions that they were not to be disturbed by anyone. Only by people with a bona fide letter of appointment. And that doesn't start till two o'clock. Damn. Yes. I was hoping to see them at the station, only I missed the stupid bus. As a matter of fact, they're even having their lunch sent upstairs. Really? Yes, eating in their rooms. Well, what's all the secrecy for? Everybody knows what they're up to. Mm -hmm. well, I've got a job to do. It's the brain drain. The brain drain comes to West, eh? Still, it's all very hard, Hughesy, isn't it? Conducting their super-efficient business deals from the top floor of the Royal Hotel. Have they got a suite? Uh, two suites they've taken, and two other bedrooms besides. Gosh! And they've had a bar sent up, and a typewriter, and a dictaphone, and... and a dictaphone? Wowee! Yes, well, anyway, those are my instructions. Only people with a bona fide letter of appointment to be allowed up there. I'm sorry, but it is all rather meant to impress, don't you reckon? Tell me, did they, were they tight-lipped and those buttoned-down collars, and those black, shiny, squared-off briefcases? They seemed all right to me. What were the trousers like? Trousers? Were they too short? I never really noticed. It's funny, isn't it? Americans always seem to wear their trousers too short. wonder why. I never really noticed their trousers. Where's my shirt? Oh. What's going on, Harry? What's he up to? Never mind what he's up to. What are you up to? Oh, uh... What's going on? I, uh, well, I don't know myself yet, really. Where are you going to? In a clean shirt with your best suit on. Found another woman, I suppose. Yes, that's it. I've got an assignation with your scarlet woman. <laughs> there are no scarlet women in Westdale. Here you are, there. None that you know of. Come on, you can tell me, can't you? Tell you what, love? Where it is you're going? Oh, when I get back, love, eh? Yeah. Oh, God. Danny! Will you get off there? Jan. Oh, Jan. What? Have you seen me cufflinks? Yes. Oh, where are they? I've eaten them. Oh, come on. I cooked them in a cream rice pudding and had them for me eleven years. Look. Not till you tell me where it is you're going. Oh, look, there's... There's nothing settled yet. I'm just... Well, I'm going to investigate the possibilities of a new job. Job? Yeah. What job? Well, I don't know yet. Look, I must have cufflinks for this what shirt. What job? I'm going to see some people. Who? What people? They're staying at the Royal. At the Royal? Yeah. Who are they? What do you mean they're staying at the Royal? Don't they come from Westdale? No. Well? Well, oh, give us me cufflinks. Rock your silly cufflinks. Well, they're Americans. Americans? Yeah. What do you mean, Americans? They come from America. Harry. Look, they're looking for skilled men. To go there? Yes. To go over there, you mean? Yes. Just what are you up to? What wild and fanciful scheme are you cooking up this time? Oh, nothing. I'm just going to see what it's all about, that's You've all. You've applied for a job in America without even telling me. We'd all go. Without mentioning a word? Well, I haven't applied well, for Well, that's it. where you're after now, isn't it? Yeah. To apply? Well, I'll see what they've got. I you... I'm just going to see what it's all about, that's Well, don't all. you think you should have... Why don't you think you should at least have said? Look. No, I suppose you thought you'd come trotting in here this evening and say, come on, Jan, pack your bag, we're off to America. Oh, look, Jan. We've only been here six months. Six months before that, you arrived out of nowhere with a bloody great caravan. The summer before that, we spent renovating that silly cottage. We've only just finished decorating. I've not even applied for a job yet. All that rotten 
war paper. It'll probably come to naught anyway. I probably haven't got enough qualifications as summers. All right, then. What if I don't want to go to America? Don't you? Never mind, don't I? What if I didn't? What then? You wouldn't mind going, would you? Oh, God, what world is it you inhabit? It'd be all right. You astound me. You really do. Oh, look, I must have cufflinks in this shirt, Jan. There's no buttons. Sweetheart, my love, my own. Take your tiny mind off cufflinks for two minutes, will you? There are more important things to talk about. I've got to be there in half an hour. You what? Oh, the man's mad. He's mad. Summerdale? Uh, yes. Right on time. Please come on in. Thank you. <laughs> Miss Jackson. Hello. I wondered if Frank Walters was in the pub. No, afraid not. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, yes, I'll have a gin please. Could I buy you a drink? No, I'll be going in a minute. I've got to make up for lost time. Not ahead of yourself for once? Just a dinner tonight, then, sir. Yes. Wouldn't like a piece of pie, would you? No, I would not like a piece of pie. Is that your lunch? Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes. Well, I read your article. Oh, yes? Which one? Now, you clearly know. I mean, dozens of phone calls about it already, even a few letters. I'm not surprised. About ten to one in favour so far. You find that gratifying? I do. You're going to do another one? A follow-up, yes. Showing the other side of the picture. The other side? Yeah, well, you did paint the town rather black, didn't you? By the time I'd finished reading your article, I was amazed to find anybody left in West Hill at all. <laughs> there are lots of young people leaving this town. And there'll be a few more, too, if Mr Dayton has his way. Who? Dayton. Dayton. He's a personnel consultant from Newark, New Jersey. He and his pals have secreted themselves on the top floor of the Royal Hotel. Oh, very indeed. The brain drain comes to Westdale. That's my next opening. American sufficiency and commercialism entices Westdale's brighter young men across the Atlantic. If they succeed, but there really is another side to the picture, don't you think? As it used to be painted by the Department of Economic Planning, for example. Why not? Perhaps you'd let me interview you on that subject sometime. Look, there's one Mr. question Hatton. I want to ask you. Do you really think you're being fair to this town? Yes. <laughs> I love youthful confidence. I've researched this article very carefully. There are a lot of young people leaving this town. They're looking for better jobs, better living conditions, better climates, more sensible taxation systems. We well, even cheaper cigarettes, some of them. Yes. And those that are going to London are just hoping to find something interesting to do in the evenings. And despite your Department of Economic Planning, this is still something of a depressed area. Do you know that the local unemployment figures stand at point six seven above the national average? And that's a fact. Yes, it's not Besides which, why should people stay in Westdale? They don't sign a contract, do they? I had no idea you were so idealistic, you know. I hardly call it idealism. I just... Listen, you are allowed to bring your soapbox into pubs in Westdale, are you? I mean, I ask Millie. Adley! I say, Adley! Oh, my God. Gordon Cramshaw, Cramshaw, Sons and Hadley, no less. Good heavens, is that the time? Oh, Mr. Cramshaw. Yes. Uh, you will excuse me, won't you? Oh, yes. Well, I've been late all day. Oh? Bye-bye. Goodbye. Well, how much are you? Well, oh, yes. Now, I'm... now, then. I've just been talking on the phone to Forbes. Oh, yes. Well, this is a nice situation, I must say. Three of our best men going all at once. Specially trained, too. Oh, there's nothing settled yet, I don't think. Yes, well, Dennis is up in arms about the whole thing. I can promise you that. He reckons you're letting the side down. Side? Well, you are, aren't you? You are on the board, after all. And I completely fail to understand your reasons for allowing Walters to print a thing like that. I am the proprietor of this paper. Exactly. Sole proprietor. I am not the editor. Oh, for heaven's sake, man, it's the same thing, isn't it? <laughs> no, it is not. Look here, Adley. You don't appear to me to appreciate the seriousness of this situation. Now, we had to send five men to college to study hydraulics, just so as we'd have enough operatives to install this new machinery. We had to sponsor them at one of these government training places, and now three of them want to leave. 
Well, it's going to give us a lot of problems. And it could cost us a lot of money. A lot? Look, every day this program runs over Sheck. Well, it's going to cost us two or three hundred pounds at least. Oh, in six months' time, those fellas could go and good luck to them. Mm. But right now, they're important. Very important. I see. Yes, and you played a pretty poor part in it all, I must say. Encouraging them to leave. Me? Well, your blasted newspaper. Sorry. Are you going up to see Mr. Dayton? Oh, uh, yes. Oh, I'm Susan Jackson from the Gazette. Oh. And you're Mr... Uh, Wilkins. Ah, oh, yes, of course. And you're with Martinson's Bridges, aren't you? No, Able... Uh, Able Electronics, actually. Oh, you're an electronics man. Yes. You must be terribly highly qualified. Oh, no, not really. Just I my suppose... national, actually. Oh, really? I, um... I suppose Mrs. Wilkins is looking forward to going to America. Oh, well, she wouldn't mind, no. And the children are excited, too, I bet. Ah, yes. Uh, look... Mind um... you, that's a trouble with Westdale, don't you think? I mean, for a man with your qualifications. Well, it is a bit... Uh... Yes? Limited. I know. And after all, ele electronics men are very highly thought of in America, aren't they? Well, that's the difference, really. There's a different class structure altogether. Yes. Thought of as the elite? Sorry? I mean, there's none of that stupid old school time business, is there? Oh, no, no, not in electronics. Uh, look, I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Wilkins, you mustn't let me keep you. But well, if I could just have a word with you afterwards. It's for a feature I'm doing, you see. Oh, well... Oh, people are very interested in this sort of thing. I mean, it takes a lot of courage for a man to take up his whole life. I mean, to take off to the other side of the world, doesn't it? Well, yes, I suppose it does, really. Be worth it, though, don't you think? Well, I think so, yes. I'm sorry, Mr. Wilkins, please don't let me keep you. No. But if I could just have a word with you afterwards, I'd be very grateful. Well, yes, all right, yes. Oh, thank you very much indeed. I'll be here. Oh, good. Good. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Well, good luck. Yeah. Oh, thanks very much. Um, excuse me. Uh, Mr. Wilkins? No. No, my name's Palmer. Oh, silly of me. I'm Susan Jackson from the Gazette. Oh, yes. Yes, um, I'm afraid I missed you when you came in. Uh, you have just been to see the transoceanic people, haven't you? Yes. Oh, good. And you're with Able Electronics, aren't you? No. That's strange. Was it Martins and Fridges? No. Gramshaw, Sons and Hadley, actually. Really? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, engineering? Yeah. Ah, oh, yes. Well, do sit down. So? I, uh... I hope you don't mind me asking this, but uh, you are thinking of taking your family to America. Oh, well, uh, there's nothing settled, not yet. Uh, no, of course not. You have to be processed first, anyway. Yes, of course. Uh, did you say your name was Susan Jackson? Yes. Oh. Only they mentioned you. Oh, they did? Yeah. I said I'd got a copy at home. <laughs> Why did they mention my name? Oh, an article you wrote. Why stay in Westdale? Pardon? Oh, well, that was the title. Why stay in Westdale? Oh, yes, that was right. Uh, they suggested I read it. They said it, were, they said it were pertinent to their proposals. Yeah, I suppose it would be, really. They have five or six copies up there of the paper. Did they now? Oh, you see, that's what I'm doing now. A follow-up to that, based on people like yourself who are thinking of going to America, or joining the brain drain. <laughs> yes, well, uh... There's nothing settled, not yet. No, of course not, but uh, you are considering it. Yes. Look, may I have your address, and then I could come and talk to you about this one evening? All right, if you like. You do live in Westdale? Yeah, Gresham Road. Oh. 27. 27. That's Oakley Hallway, isn't it? Oh, the great big place. Hmm, my boss and your boss. Oh. Well, James Hadley, Esquire. Well, Dennis Cramshaw's up in arms about it, letting the side down, he says. Now, that's his phrase, not mine. That was a perfectly good feature. I'm not denying that. Facts are facts. All right, I accept them. Even so. What? Well, it's put me in a damned awkward position. Stride? What? Legs akimbo, foot in each cap. Yeah. Well, it's come at a very awkward time for me, I'll tell you that. On here. On here. And then there's that girl. What girl? Susan Jackson. Oh, this morning's oversleeper. Mm. What about her? 
Well, she made a very nasty crack about my late department. You know, that girl seems to be taking quite an interest in this business. She's quite, uh... Idealistic? No, I wouldn't put it as strongly yeah. as that, but something oh. along those lines. I like to see that in my young reporters, the campaigning instinct. Oh, no. Now what? Oh, no, she'll be at that blasted hotel. The Royal? Well, there are three bright young men from Cramshaw's going down there this morning for their interviews. It's news. But they'll say they come from Cramshaw, Sons and Hadley. She already tried to interview me this morning. Oh. You're involved. Look, couldn't you send her away somewhere? Go and see someone in the Orkneys, perhaps? Because that doesn't know anybody in the well, Orkneys. Well, they well should do. Everybody's fascinated by the goings-on up there. What's happening in the Orkneys, they say. I hear them all the time. You're letting this upset you. I've every right to be upset. Look, Dennis and Gordon Cramshaw are going to blame me for every snarl-up that occurs in that modernisation programme. Which snarl-up, I may say, will be the net result of three men leaving the firm all at once to join the brain drain. Three men? What do you mean, three men? It's half, half the labour force that knows anything about hydraulics, according to Forbes, and he should know. Sounds to me like a case of shoddy managerial oh, organisation. I'm disillusioned with this affair, I'll tell you that. Down there. Down there. I don't like office boys much, either. Mm. It wasn't like this in my father's day. No, the rise of the oppressed ragged. classes, you oh, see. Oh, my God. Now what? Are you going to be at that mayoral function this evening? Yeah. Well, will you stay by me throughout, please? Are Cramshaw's son's going to be there? That you can take as an absolute certainty. Now, Gordon is the, uh, larger of the two. <laughs> you could say that. Look, would you pay attention, please? Do you realise that three men have got the whole Offer of this... Offer more money, better working conditions, luncheon vouchers. I do wish you'd be practical, you know. Do you realise that the government has imposed an incomes policy? Ah. Now then, three and a half percent in terms of pennies in the pound. That's eight and two-fifths pennies in the pound. Now, let's say they're earning a th No, probably 1,500. It's less than a pound a week, and that's before tax. Give them a card each. Give them a card each. You know, I, I really am becoming disenchanted with this affair. If it wasn't for the Cramshaws, I'd applaud that girl's article. You would? Yes, I would. I mean, even your paper has to have some opinions, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Exactly. Besides which, Mr Hadley, who did emigrate yourself once? Even if it was only to London. Yeah. Can I help you? Well, I'm Susan Jackson from the Gazette. Oh, yes. I understand from downstairs that you've finished interviewing people. Yes, we have. Oh, good. Only I wondered if you'd let me interview you. Oh, uh, yes, I see. It's for a feature I'm doing. Uh, yes. I wonder, would you mind waiting here for just one moment, please? Come in, won't you, Miss Jackson? Oh. You know, it seems that you've been rather instrumental in helping us persuade one or two of our clients. Oh? Yes. What's that for? I don't really know. I just bought it. You got the job, then? I got a firm offer. A firm offer. Well? I've got to let them know. When? In a week or so. If I... if I process all right. Process? Yeah. Where's Danny? Oh, he's out having tea with his girlfriend. Oh? What do they mean by that? Only he'd go to school there, see? Well, of course he would. I mean, he'd grow up to be like an American. Harry, what do they mean by process? Oh, you know. Well, they ask me a lot of questions and then they process the answers. What sort of job is it, anyway? Job? Hmm. It's the same sort of job. Larger scale, of course. Same job as you're doing now? Yeah, California to be. Really? Yeah. He's made it up with her then, has he? Who? Danny. We his girlfriend. Oh, no, it's a different one from down the street. I think he fancies a bridge, actually. Her teeth stick out a bit. I suppose I'd better go and have a word with Jack Summerdale, really, and Dave. Who? Jack Summerdale. Only he and Dave Cartwright are thinking of going as well. To America? Yeah. What do you want to talk to them about? Well, that's what I said. They're thinking of going too. Oh, they won't know any more about it than you do, though, will they? No, it is to leave the firm in a bit of a mess, you see. Cramshaws? Yeah, if we all went. Oh, so what? Well, they did sponsor me to take those exams, didn't they? Oh, it was a government place. You got a grant. Yeah, but Cramshaws had to put some money towards it as well. well they only did it for their own benefit, though, didn't they? Because of that modernisation thing or whatever it was. Yeah, but if I hadn't, if they hadn't, then I wouldn't have uh, got this firm offer, would I? Well, you mean you wouldn't have been qualified? No. What do you think about it? Going? You're surely not asking me at last. Well, what do you think? I don't know, really. No. Well, I 
don't suppose it will be all that bad. They pay a lot of money. Do they? Yeah, flyers all out there. All of us? Yeah. I'd have to sign a contract, though. 18 months minimum stay. Oh, where's the Gazette? Gazette? Yeah. You haven't sold it out, have you? No. What do you want it for? Well, I saw one of their reporters today. She, uh, she said she was going to interview me. You? Yeah. You were the one who wrote that article. They mentioned it. They? Yeah, the Americans. Why Stan Westdale, it's gone. Well, I found it, love. They, uh, they said it were pertinent to their proposals. That there. Yeah. It's cold. Don't be daft. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes, I shall be there. Dennis, I shall be there very quickly if you'd only let me finish dressing. Thank you. Big pardon, Mr. James. Yes, Max, what is it? A young lady to see you. Really? Who's that? Is that Miss Jackson? Oh, good Lord. Can I show her any of you, sir? Yes, yes, I suppose you'd better. Very good, Mr. James. I want to come in, Miss Jackson. Thank you. Hello. How are you, Miss Jackson? How very nice. Oh, are you going out? That's a lamb to the slaughter. Really? Yes, but I won't involve you in my problems, but I can offer you a drink. I'm going to have one. Oh, thank you. Now then, I. Uh, I'm afraid we have no beer in the house, but we've got some gin, whiskey, right. vodka, sherry, or a rather peculiar liqueur with a tree imprisoned in the bottle. Would you like some of that? I think the one you first thought of. Yes, you? what was that? Gin. Gin, right. You, uh, you're not driving, are you? No. Good. No, I came on a bus. On a bus? You came to see me on a bus? So yes, Mr Palmer was out, you see. Who? Mr Palmer. He works for you. Yes, do you take tonic, do you, or...? Yes, please. Quite a lot. Quite a lot. That's in character, anyway. There, how's that? Fine, thank you. Good. Cheers. Uh, cheers. I've seen Messrs Johnson, Dayton and Field. From Newark, New Jersey? They were very charming. I'm delighted to hear it. Yeah, they all had short trousers, though. Did they? Yes. Yes, well, so Mr. Palmer was out and you decided to come and see me, did you? Mm, I hope you don't mind me saying this, but uh, your handkerchief doesn't look right like that. Does it? No, it spoils the effect. Really? Well, you see, I am the victim of circumstances that are beyond my control. Shall I do it for you? If you like. That's better, is it? Oh, yes, much. Yes. Yes, he's gone to see the other two. The other two? Yes. They work for you as well. Mr Palmer has? Yes. Yes, I see. In what capacity? They're engineers. Ah, yes. Well, you probably know this, of course, but they are actually hydraulic engineers. Yes, what is it, Maxwell? <coughs> Just half past, sir. Good God, is it really? Have you got the car outside? Right, yeah, right, sir. Well, um, just give me a few more moments, would you? Very good, Mr James. Could you give me a lift, please? Certainly, of course I'll give you a lift. Where do you want to go to? Purgatory? Gresham Road. It's where Mr Palmer lives. He might be back by now. Ah, it yes. took me over half an hour to walk here from the village. You know, I had the pleasure of meeting Harry Palmer this morning. Until then, my life had been a great deal more pleasant. I'm considering a prosecution. Well, Mr Palmer? Mm. You. Me? Yes, you. <laughs> what have I done? What have you done? You have caused me a great deal of social inconvenience. Sorry. You know, I'm on my way this evening to a function that, until now, I'd rather looked forward to. Now, thanks entirely to your journalistic expertise, I'm going to spend the evening being roasted. Really? Mm, and I wish you weren't so damn pleased about it. I'm sorry. Actually, that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Your attitude to this business from the employer's point of my view. My and... God, you really are thick-skinned, aren't you, for one so young? I'm 22. Well, nobody would ever believe it. And you're certainly taking every advantage you can, aren't you? You won't, then. Give you... No, I will not. No. Give you an interview? Yes. I'll give you a lift as far as Gresham Road. I suppose he might be back by now. Let us hope, for all our sakes, that he isn't. I just put you down as a no comment, Yes, then. would you put me down as a no comment and perhaps you'd send me a postcard from the Orkneys? The Orkneys? Well, better still, the Dogger Bank. Come on. <laughs>
dear, how long is it going to be? Look, would you like a cup of coffee? Oh, I'm just yeah. making some. I just knew one. I'm not quite sure if I've got it right. <laughs> Let me take it. Oh, thank you. So look here. Oh, that's the kitchen, really. Oh, well. Oh, what do you think? Well, it's the right colour anyway. Shall we try some? Yes, thank you. White, please. Oh, you're, you're halfway through your ironing. Oh, that's all right. Oh, well, I don't want to interrupt. But to be quite honest, I don't like ironing all that much. <laughs> Shall we go through? Oh, well, if we stay here and then you can finish. Oh, I suppose I ought to, really. But it's not very polite, though, is it, entertaining the press in the kitchen? I don't mind, honestly. Well, look, let's see what this tastes like. Sugar? Please, thank you. What do you think? Mmm, lovely. What do you think? I'm not sure, really. You won it in a raffle. What? Oh, the percolator? Well, we don't drink all that much coffee, really. You will, though, won't you, if you go to America? Oh, yes, that's right. They don't like tea over there, do they? No, they make it in glasses. Really? Yes. What do you think about it, then? Going to America? Mm. Oh, I only heard about it at lunchtime. Really? Mm, I think he wanted to surprise me. Yeah, that would be a surprise. You know, he does the weirdest things. We had this cottage, mm, last summer it must have been, and he suddenly appeared out of the blue with the most enormous caravan you've ever seen. Come on, he said, we can move from place to place in this thing. And did you? No. One side of Westdale to the other and back again. Well, only two proper sites within miles, you see. I know. What happens is, he gets an idea into his head, but he won't tell anybody about it till he's got it all cut and dried. It's the same with his studying. I thought I'd married a plain, simple lathe turner, or whatever it is you call them. You know, steady job, security, all that sort of thing. One evening, he comes home and announces to all and sundry that he's off on a crash. A crash? Oh, was it a crash? No, sandwich. Oh, a sandwich course. That's right. Six months studying, six months working. Yeah, I know. Well, the point is, he'd applied for it months before. Without telling you? Well, not until a couple of days before he was due to leave. Well, he was home at the weekends. Oh, well, that wasn't too bad. Three years it lasted. It's been worth it, though, hasn't it? I mean, with this America thing. If he decides to go. Well, he'll discuss, he'll discuss it with you, won't you? If I don't want to go, we won't go. Well, no. I mean, I'd just say, wouldn't I? I'd just say I don't want to go. Well, yes. You're not married, are you? No. No? No. You know, I sometimes wonder if I go about things the right way. After all, it's supposed to be an equal partnership these days, isn't it? Yes, I suppose so. Mm. Trouble is, I've got sort of used to it. I mean, he comes home with one of these ideas and I grumble a bit, but I go along with it. Yes? I don't argue things out with him. Well, he doesn't give me the chance. Just presents you with a fait accompli. You are. Sorry. Well, he just tells you what he's done. That's right. Mind you, I can't say that life isn't full of surprises. I mean, no. honestly. Can you imagine if you were married and you had a small son and you'd just finished decorating and your silly fool of a husband came home one night and said, Come on, love, pack your bags, we're off to California. California? Wow. Is that where you're going? If we go. He's worried now about the firm, thinks the place will fall down if he leaves it. Yes, but even so, Dave, you must admit it'll... It'll leave him in a bit of a mess, won't it? Well, you stop worrying about the firm. Think about yourself for a change, Harry. Yes, but after all, they did sponsor me, didn't they? All right, they sponsored all of us, didn't they? I don't reckon I owe them out for that. Nor do you, do you, Jack? Oh, Dave's right, you know, Harry. Look, they gave us the opportunity to learn as much about hydraulics as we could. Hydraulics and hydraulic automation. Yes, I know. No, wait a minute. Look, you see, what Dave's trying to say... I is can explain, explain, thank you, Jack. Yes, but if Now, I... listen. The reason they did, and the only reason, is because they thought that by going over to hydraulic automation they could make a lot of money. That and the fact that they were too mean to hire half a dozen graduates or whatever. And let's face it, they stood to make a lot more out of it than we did. That's right. Oh, well. 
Anyway, there's still three of them left. Old Frank Peters is not leaving. <laughs> He'll never leave Westdale, not with his mum. Young Kevin won't stray far from his dad, will he? <laughs> and those two-faced old Forbes himself will have to do a bit of graft. <laughs> oh, come on, he's not that bad. Forbes, eh? Do you know, when I were at school, we used to call a man like that a creep. Yes, Mr. Cramshaw. No, Mr. Cramshaw. Three bags full, Mr. Cramshaw. Dear, gives me the willies, that man. Any road, there's no need to bring in personalities, is there? All right. All right. We'll stick to basic facts, shall we? Now, these transcontinental Oceanic. people... Oceanic. Have... Hey? Transoceanic. It's in my oh, letter on the heading. Oh, these Americans. Now, they've made all three of us firm offers of jobs. With more pay, longer holidays, better prospects, they've agreed to fly our families out there and they've guaranteed the availability of a mortgage on a house the moment we land. And don't forget the climate. I don't know much about Wisconsin, but that is going to California. Right, and the climate. Now, against all that, what are you going to put? Socialist wage freeze, £50 holiday allowance, dearer cigarettes, and the fact that poor old Cramshaws might not get their modernisation scheme finished on schedule. Hey, come on. So what? Even if it does cost them a few bob, they can afford it. Both them Cramshaws running about in bloody great Rolls Royces all the time. The fat one's got a map. Is that so? Yeah, I saw him in it in the town yesterday. He was trying okay, to park Okay, Hawkeye. <laughs> that Hadley don't do too badly neither. Hey, Hadley Badley. <laughs> I met him this morning. Badly Hadley? Yeah, he seemed quite pleasant. Yeah, it's a trick they learn, these businessmen. <laughs> Charm into your face and right bastards when you're not looking. Oh, yeah. I appreciate the way you feel about it, Harry. Really, I do. I admire you for it. No, no. But you've got to be reasonable. This is a gold-plated opportunity for us, and we'll be fools not to take it. And we'll be even bigger bloody fools if we let any worries about Cramshaws stop us from going. Surely you can see that. Ah, uh, he's right enough, you know, Harry. Well, let me put it another way. Me and Jack are definitely going. And what does that leave you with? Two-faced old Forbes, his snotty-nosed son, and a man that bears a striking resemblance to an old woman. Who, <laughs> Frank? Yeah. <laughs> Look, you'd have people pushing you in all directions trying to make sure they got their crummy scheme finished on time. I mean, who can work in an atmosphere like that? Not likely. No. So they sponsored us. So what? They knew they was taking a chance. They knew it might not come off. And besides, they never made us take no vows, did they? They never asked us to sign no contracts. I wouldn't have done. No, me. No, well, I suppose they trusted us. Oh, come on. Trusted us? Businessmen? They just never thought we'd get a better offer, that's all. It's a matter of loyalties, Hadley, as I'm sure you can appreciate. Yes, no doubt. But the board are going to want to know just where these loyalties lie. Are they really? Oh, we all realise, of course, that to a great extent your financial ventures in the town have been, well, less thrust upon you, as it were. You yourself haven't sought after them. No. Nevertheless, the responsibility now is entirely yours, and you really must act accordingly. Must? Must. I'm sorry, Hadley, but that is the word. This is really... Well, after all, you have a responsibility towards our employees as well, you know. As well as to the board, you mean? Well, of course. Yes, but the board comes first. Naturally. Oh, yes, naturally. Cramshaw, Cramshaw, Cramshaw and Cramshaw. There's no need for you to adopt that tone. Well, how long has this plan been in operation? Eight months. And before that, in the planning stage? Well, I know, no, no, no. We appreciate you... the yes. fact that this scheme was planned and set in motion long before you took an active interest in the business. But that doesn't mean to say you can go around willy-nilly trying to sabotage the whole thing. I beg your pardon. Well, that'll be the board's consensus, Hadley. I Will can it? tell you that now. They and the other stockholders will want from you a clear and reasonable explanation of your actions in this matter. <laughs> you mean to say that I'm to be asked, as the owner of the paper, for an explanation as to why one of my reporters writes a perfectly ordinary article about the number of people leaving Westdale and their reasons for doing so? Well, that's rather a point under discussion, yes. It's psychological, you see. So no, I don't edit this paper. Well, 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 I do that. not edit this paper. No, no, don't you own it, don't you? I'm it? glad that you could make it. Hello there, Radley. Mr. Mayor? I had something that I wanted to say to you, Mr. Radley. Oh, yes? Now then... Uh, uh, excuse us a moment, Frank. Eh? Oh, yes. Yes, of course, of course. Well, what was that then, Mr. Mayor? Ah, oh, yes. 
It's about this newspaper of yours. Oh, yes, you like it? Eh? Oh, yes, I like it, certainly. But my town clerk pointed out something to me yesterday. He wanted me to have a word with you about it. Yes, and I wonder what that was. Poor publicity for the town, he says. It was that article they printed about the number of young people leaving Westdale. Ah, yes. Yeah. Mind you, I'm not saying you shouldn't print stuff like that about the town. You're not. Good gracious, no. A local newspaper has every right in the world to criticise the town it serves, as long as it's reasonable criticism. After all, that's what a newspaper's for, eh? Keep the town on its toes, you see what I mean? Yes, yes, I do. No, all I was advised to ask was, would you grant us an equivalent space in a future edition so that I or the town clerk could reply? Yes, I'd be delighted to. Ah, I mean, there's a lot of good things going on in Westdale, you know, as well as a few bad ones. But mm. I do think it's only fair to give the other side of the picture, don't mm, you think? I do, indeed. But, of course, the man you want to speak to is Frank Walters. Yes, I know that, but I thought I'd mention it to you first. You know, clear the ground, like. I mean, you know, we're in the right place to sometimes clear things up. Yes, yes, of course, but he'll be here himself soon, I'm sure. Ah, oh, good, then I'll mention it. Matter of fact, he should be here now, protecting me. Oh, yes? Yes, I am his sole proprietor. Did you know? Oh, aye. Yes. Oh, that's a nice one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, that's the back of the cottage. Is it? Oh, there he is now. Better tell him not to put it away. Hi, love. Don't put the car away. You've got a young lady to take home. A young lady? <laughs> He's trying to tell me he doesn't know any young ladies. What does he think I am? You sure he won't mind? Oh, no, that's all right. That young lady. Oh. Hello, we waiting ages for you to come back. Miss Jackson wants to interview you. Oh. oh, not now. It's far too late. I said you'd run her home. Oh, yes. You sure you don't mind? No. Oh, thank you. Now, you've got time for a cup of coffee before you go. There you are. Help yourself. Oh, thank you. We've been going through the photographs. Oh. You've got a smashing little boy. Oh, yes. Sit down, love. Yeah. And she helped me with the ironing. Oh. You're not drunk, are you? No. What's the matter with you, then? Cat got your tongue? Be polite, for heaven's sake. Oh, would you like a cigarette? Oh, no, thank you. Not just now. No, no but I... Oh, sorry. After you. Oh, I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. Oh, no. I've had a very pleasant evening. Gossiping. Oh. She's doing a feature. Oh. About all the people going to America. Oh, I see. It's terrible, isn't it? Like getting blood from a stone. Yes. What is? Getting information out of you, love. Oh, I don't know. You haven't decided yet? Well, we talked it over. It's all right, Mr Palmer. I've given up being a news hound for today. Oh, it'll do you no good in this house. Not till we've got the tickets, I shouldn't wonder. Well, I must be going. I mustn't keep you any longer. Oh, yes. Are you sure you don't mind? No. Oh, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Here oh. you are. Thank you. Now, I'll give you a ring when old Stoneface over there nip his mind. Oh, fine. I think James Haddy will be interested to hear as well. Who? Hadley, our ultimate boss. Well, she should know by now. I'll give you a ring first thing in the morning. Frank. Well, this may come as a surprise to you, but the departure of those three men is not my main concern. For one thing, I'm fairly certain that the Cramshaws are just exaggerating this to throw their weight about in my direction. Skilled men aren't that hard to come by. Oh, no, this is just a family plot. And as far as I'm concerned, it's beginning to work. Oh? My engineering interests are very definitely turning south. That should rather just be a newspaper man. No, I didn't say that. But those are the lines along which you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, right. Look, if I decided to sell out of engineering, what could I do with the money? Newspaper-wise? If you like. Any number of things. All right, name six. <laughs> Extend your empire? Yes. Buy another newspaper. Well, the Kerthwaite Mercury is groggy, to say the least. And then? Incorporated. Mm -hmm. The Westdale and Kerthwaite Gazette, with slip pages for those errors. Do you like my handkerchief, do you? Oh. It's not deliberate, is it? Yes. It was arranged for me by a girl. Was it now? The same girl who precipitated this crisis. You know, that Dennis Cramshaw is a bloody irritating man. Yes. And I may well decide to accept the blame. For what? For them leaving. Summerdale, Cartwright and Palmer. That's right. Summerdale, Cartwright and Palmer. Have fun. The thing is, what about Danny? Mm. I mean, he would grow up to be an American, wouldn't he? Mm. I mean, if we stayed there any length of time, he would. Well, why not? They're nice enough people, most of them. Be all right. 
why shouldn't he be an American as long as he's good? <clears throat> we might as well go. Might just as well. We make a change anyway, wouldn't it, eh? Ain't you? Be all right. We'll go.